grazie al dottore Catagnani. Prima di cominciare... Ah, me lo lascio. Uh, diciamo, grazie al dottore Catagnano che ha sottolineato l'aspetto importante della, della, del consumo dei prodotti itti, cioè il valore nutrizionale che loro hanno. Però quando si parla di, 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 questa, di consumo dei, dei prodotti ittici, uh, una delle cose che viene immediatamente in mente a noi che lavoriamo in questo settore è il conflitto che c'è tra valore nutrizionale e uh, uh, tossico uh, aspetto della tossicologia correlata al consumo dei prodotti ittici. I prodotti ittici non sempre uh, fanno bene, ci sono delle realtà nel mondo, posso? Ci sono delle realtà nel mondo in cui, in cui i prodotti ittici rappresentano un problema per la, per la salute umana, contaminazione da metilmercurio, contaminazione da PCB. Uh, ci sono delle altre, uh, uh, delle altre, delle altre, degli altri problemi per la salute umana correlati al, al consumo dei prodotti ittici che sono quelli connessi con, la, uh, con i, pro i problemi biologici, uh, la presenza di uh, possibili parassiti. Uh, però uh, quindi ci sono dei, dei problemi oltre che dei, dei vantaggi dal consumo dei prodotti ittici. Noi consumatori in tutto questo ci possiamo uh, difendere attraverso quei meccanismi uh, che riguardano la, la certificazione, la tracciabilità dei prodotti. Cioè noi uh, possiamo accertarci da dove vengono questi prodotti, quindi possiamo scegliere i prodotti di qualità. Di questo ci parleranno loro, uh, Salo affronterà il problema delle contaminazioni chimiche Uh, Ivona della contaminazione biologica e uh, lei ci parlerà degli aspetti connessi con la tracciabilità di questi prodotti. Tutto questo a che serve? Serve a introdurre l'argomento della tavola rotonda. La tavola rotonda ha come argomento la qualità e la salubrità dei prodotti ittici siciliani. A fronte di questi problemi noi ci presentiamo con dei prodotti che hanno uh, uh, degli aspetti di qualità e di salubrità uh, invidiabili. E Giovanni Tumbiolo con la sua capacità maieutica ci aiuterà a tirare fuori, a mettere sul tavolo questi, questi argomenti. Uh, per questo io comincerei dando la parola a Salua. Salua è una ricercatrice, una giovane ricercatrice dell'Istituto di Tecnologie uh, del Mare, di Scienze e Tecnologie del Mare di, uh, uh, della Tunisia. Uh, Salua è coinvolta in uh, alcuni progetti transnazionali per i quali noi collaboriamo in minima parte e oggi ci presenterà i risultati di queste ricerche uh, che sono state tenute con la collaborazione di, di importanti istituti di ricerca uh, siciliani. Passo la parola a Salua. Okay, good morning. Thank you for uh, my uh, the invitation. I want uh, first to thank you for the invitation and finally thanks for Andrea for this introduction. So as uh, he said, uh, I will uh, transfer you the main result, I can say, of uh, our uh, uh, cross-border uh, collaboration between uh, Tunisia and uh, Sicilia. Uh, first, I will uh, start... Uh, Is there any? Oh, I mean, I want to make uh, the, my presentation a little bit clearer than I, the one I sent. It's okay. So I, because I didn't know in which, uh, which was the context. Sorry.
bisogno verso l'italiano, dall'inglese? Avete bisogno di traduzione? Vedete che qualcuno... Vedete la recupera? Sì, sì. Spera, prova a accendere. Everybody remain with the dub. <laughs> remain with the dub from where? Yeah, so I was really very happy when they said the, uh, the format of the presentation because you can you can give your picture so you can I, I can prepare everybody already so they don't ask anymore but then most of the time everywhere I go. Can I start? Uh, so I will uh, start uh, to present uh, the plan, just to make uh, my uh, presentation a little bit clearer than the one I sent. Uh, I will start with uh, to present the context uh, why we did the aquatic uh, for about the aquatic product sector within the cross border Tunisian Sicilian area, uh, which opportunity was given to us to, uh, to to work in this field to support the sector. Brief this presentation of the pattern in the project, special emphasis uh, to the quality and safety of the aquatic product, the, and uh, how can we ensure the quality or the safety of aquatic product, and I will present case of study done within Biovec and Secure Aqua project. So, uh, both uh, of uh, Tunisia and uh, in uh, Sicilia, uh, the aquatic products are of high economic uh, importance. In Tunisia, for example, it is the second uh, uh, aquacultural product exported to uh, European Union and also to other countries. Uh, but also it employs uh, thousands of people in the sector, so it is important as well as in, in Sicilia than in Tunisia. But uh, we, as we are in the Mediterranean, the species are various and abundant, but as uh, uh, we said that uh, also aquaculture uh, farm, the product start to be a part, an important part of uh, uh, the, the aquatic product. But uh, as uh, we know that uh, there is an increased consumer uh, interest for aquatic product and according to FAO, uh, study the trend of uh, uh, consumption, fish consumption in general from aquaculture or even from the sea is increasing and it has an increased trend towards 2050. So we have, uh, but also be because we know the, uh, the health and benefit uh, it has to come to uh, the consumer. So uh, so that's why we have we were concerned uh, both uh, Tunisian research but also uh, Sicilian researchers to uh, start to study or to start the work within this area. This opportunity was given to us uh, to work within uh, thanks to uh, funds from uh, the uh, European uh, Union and especially from uh, the Cic uh, from uh, EUVP project um, program. Uh, through two, two projects. One is uh, uh, Biovec, it is a strategic project, biotechnology, I mean, it's the name is in French, Biotechnologie Marine, Vecteur d'Innovation et de Qualité. Uh, this project starts in uh, 
2013, so, and the second one is a standard project, and it's about more uh, focused uh, towards uh, um, aquaculture uh, um, product. Uh, so uh, mainly, uh, its name is security, uh, security, qualité des produits aquacoles, le développement d'une voie commune tuniso sinicilienne Donc, uh, so, uh, so both are running together. So uh, we have in the first project Biovec, we have we are uh, seven. Uh, we have seven partners, uh, four in in Sicilia and three uh, partners, and the beneficiary is in Tunisia. But also we have partners uh, which are important uh, also who collaborate with us within this project. So uh, the part in, in, uh, in Italy, it's the Parc Scientifique et Technologique de la Cécile, the Consortium Universitaire de Trapani, l'Institut Zooprophylactique de Palerme, the Département des Interventions pour la Pêche, En Tunisie, c'est le c'est un, un c'est un, c'est une technopole de CDFEB en biotechnologie. Le groupement interprofessionnel c'est it is an interface between the research and uh, the sector, the enterprise, which is important. And we have also l'institution uh, de la recherche de l'enseignement supérieur agricole. This is a uh, national uh, institution. Uh, the partners are also important in this project. In Secure Aqua, it's a smaller project. It has, it, we are always the same partner, but we have in plus the Direction Générale des Services Vétérinaires, which is important because we have to rely on them on regulation and, uh, but also we have uh, associate in this project. So why we this pass special emphasis to the quality and sa safety? I, because in Biovec uh, we have all the, uh, other activity, but in this presentation I will have a special focus on uh, the safety and quality, because we find that there is inconsistency uh, in quality uh, within the Tunisian and Sicilian aqua aquaculture product. For example, we don't have the same. Uh, a man, uh, we, we ha there is uh, some uh, uh, not common uh, reglement regulation, but also a uh, um, way to follow the quality in both area. But also we found that there is limitation uh, about uh, testing, uh, mm, testing the quality of aquatic product. For example, if we look to the, uh, the, uh, the analysis of lipid, there is nothing about uh, the extraction of lipids special to uh, aquatic product. This is one of example. But uh, we have uh, uh, we noticed noticed also that there is a consumer the consumer confidence toward aquatic product safety is uh, declining and due lately to some problem about, uh, for example, antibiotics and so on in aquaculture product. But in the inverse, we know that uh, the human health benefit of aquatic product consumption are, uh, are becoming increasing because study now showing from day to another the importance of, uh, we discover each time the importance of uh, eating sea uh, food, seafood in our, uh, f for our health. So in, uh, how we come to, s to, to know how to ensure the quality and safety of aquatic products. So we need first to have the tools to uh, monitor the quality of uh, aquatic product through the method of evaluation, but also we have to implement uh, some uh, new, uh, new method of, to develop new method, to standard, uh, standardize this method, to harmonize, in, 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 all these are not done within this area. But also we need to, to, have, uh, to have a screening of contaminant, both biological contaminant, but chemical contaminant, as said Andrea, about chemical, but also about antibiotics and so on. We need also to uh, have uh, information about the nutritional quality of, seafood, uh, of uh, food, uh, so we need to uh, determine all this uh, quality. But also we need to know from where it comes, this product. So the traceability is an important uh, compound in the quality of seafood. So uh, I am going to, as you know, uh, many, there is 
too many uh, method to uh, to follow or to evaluate the quality of aquaculture product so many of them first we have to start how to uh, sample this is there is no uh, way it's uh, clear uh, to uh, know how we ha we need to sample the fish so we started with that with this, about the bleibit extraction, protein, ash, and so on. So all this have were done in our laboratory, especially between uh, the laboratory of CUPT and INESTM, where we harmonized, we come to harmonize the procedure. So we have now procedure harmonized uh, through uh, ana um, common analysis between Tunisia and CUPT, and we had training in both uh, laboratories. Uh, with the same, even sometimes with the same uh, samples, uh, to uh, to have all this uh, procedure harmonized between our. Uh, this is an important outlook output of uh, the project. Another example is about antibiotics. Uh, why we uh, we come to this because we had a real problem in Tunisia about antibiotics and uh, which may had an important impact. Uh, problems in uh, Tunisia because uh, some said that uh, found in just in one analysis he said that there is a lot antibiotics in aquaculture product. So this was uh, yes we had this uh, one years ago. So this was a big problem, and uh, because antibiotics, all this analysis were are done because we export also uh, seafood. I mean uh, product to. Uh, to Europe and so on. So this uh, has to be done. So we spend a lot of money to uh, do this analysis outside Tunisia, in I think France, and uh, in accredited laboratory. So we started to do this analysis in our laboratory. We are implementing this method between Tunisia and uh, if uh, in ESTM and uh, the Institute of Prophylactic uh, of Palerme. So this is important. And it is done within BioVec project. We are doing the harmonization of the method, uh, both using LCMS and also HPLC. And we are continuing on the analytical procedure and the validation of the method. So, uh, but we were concerned to do also a screening of antibiotics in. Uh, uh, in um, farmed seafood uh, fish in Tunisia, uh, going through uh, samples taken from a farm, a different farm in Tunisia, and so far, it should, which is good, all our uh, study here and the, in, uh, uh, the level of, for example, tetracycline were lower than the therefore permitted in the flesh, which is about 100 microgram per gram. So. We, as said, Andrea, we are screening for of contaminant in all. Uh, I mean, on species we are concerned, like oyster, mussels, uh, sea bream, sea bass. But also we have in Tunisia freshwater fish, which are important, which are like soup perca and uh, the carp. And we are looking for pesticide, uh, polyhydrocarbon, uh, pH and mercury lead and uh, trace metals. So this is this is uh, done in this various species. And uh, so the sample analysis are, uh, we are processing in the data are in progress. But uh, all this study, of course, is uh, accompanied by uh, meta-analysis and statistical study of the principal contaminant. We don't have such a study both within uh, Tunisia and also in uh, uh, Sicilia area. So this is an important also new output for the project. Of course, uh, here we are concerned to uh, analyze and to determine the uh, quality, nutritional quality of the product and inter to determine the intrinsic quality according to region, but also on seasonal basis. This is important because, uh, as you know, uh, 
um, labeling is now uh, a new reglementation, EU reglementation, which is, was implemented implement, uh, obligatory since 2014. So now if we need to, to export, we need to have label on the product. So this was done for on CBAS and CBREAM, and we always do the same, um, the analysis according to the procedure we determined in BioVec, uh, according to the fish. And here we have uh, all the um, information, nutritional information on uh, CBAS and CBREAM. But also in other uh, species, I didn't. I don't. Ha I th think I don't have time to present all the results. It's too much result. This was accompanied also by um, uh, the TIC, uh, technology of information uh, and communication about uh, this is is. Um, done on uh, traceability of farmed fish, but also it will be on uh, species uh, of, um, sea from seafood. So uh, this is uh, also uh, currently done. For example, here I present you the, uh, the tick application for seafood and uh, um, to produce all the information for labeling uh, the product. Also this is uh, we have this uh, from last uh, meeting in uh, Sicilia, and so especially in Trapani, where we found we need to do this in Tunisia too. So this is to harmonize method between uh, both uh, countries. Traceability also is ensured uh, when the fish is um, processed. We don't know where it, what it is. It is n uh, we need to know what it is. So this is we we do traceability through the identification of uh, species in processed seafood using molecular biology. This, wo this work is done also between NESTM and uh, the Institute of Prophylactic of uh, Palerm. So here it is based mainly on a molecular study of DNA uh, uh, followed by FR RFLP, uh, PCR RFLP or sequencing. So now we have already nearly three years of collaboration between Tunisia. We had this collaboration which is established, which is good, and uh, I think it's innovation in itself. So we did some harmonization of procedure. We developed a new analytical method. We create a database for the main uh, nutritional quality of main uh, aquatic product. All this is done, I mean, it's, uh, it's valuable uh, output of thanks to this project. So we need to keep this. We need to do the, keep this uh, in the future. So we need to, uh, we plan to create, uh, to continue the research and develop because also I didn't present here, we had established convention with uh, enterprise in Tunisia and both in, uh, so this is important. We need to keep all this through the creation of uh, lab, uh, creation of a virtual laboratory uh, to increase our analytical capacity to support uh, uh, the uh, monitoring program of uh, aquatic product and to enhance, for example, the we need to do accreditation in Tunisia because we don't have any accredited laboratory in Tunisia dealing with uh, fish product analysis. So this is very important to keep it going on. But also we need to, uh, there are also some other concerns about uh, the safety of uh, seafood and uh, in general like biotoxin and uh, as you know there is a number of uh, new antibiotics going on so we need to establish new method and to go on on this project. Of course this I want to acknowledge all our Mm, uh, partners in this project and uh, our laboratory team. Yes, it, you are. You are there. <laughs> there. <laughs> but also, I want to thank you for your attention from Tunisia and Sicilia. Thank you. Thank you. Vorrei aggiungere un auto. Thank you, Sarah. You forgot to talk about the realization of a technological um, platform on which
So the BioVac partnership will provide companies of the transitional area this platform, TIC platform. Grazie per avermelo ricordato. E penso che questo sia l'output okay. uh, risultato più. Uh, adesso uh, interverrà uh, Ivona Mladineo, che è dell'Istituto Oceanografico Croato, uh, e che è un... Newspaper and she had a picture of her job, which is uh, strongly connected to the uh, expo issue because it reminds a uh, dish, a particular dish of Chinese noodles. Do you remember that picture? Yes, of course. And it's very beautiful, but the content is not that good. It's a kind of a shocking content. So I'm very glad to have you here because we had the luck of. Uh, collaborating with Ivona with its very good results concerning the effect on the cells of the uh, products of excretion and secretion and the other products uh, conducting to the inflammation of the cells and we saw that they can uh, create some pathway uh, that goes towards the, um, the cancer. So you want to talk about some aspects connected to the biological contamination of these products. Thank you so much, Andrea. Thank you to the Sicilian region for having uh, for this participation. It is an honor to be here. My presentation will not be in Italian because otherwise it would last for hours. So Anisakis, because my talk is going to be focused on Anisakis, there is a huge number of other parasites that are transmitted through the seafood, but I think for the Mediterranean, Anisakis is the problem number one. You can see here that the, the boat uh, fisheries and aquaculture production is increasing in Mediterranean, and there are two types of uh, possible um, zoonotic diseases. The one are called so foodborne diseases and anisakis is among them because anisakis is using fish to be <coughs> transmitted to humans. However, you can see also that we have what we called waterborne diseases and those are parasites that are just accidentally found in marine environment. So they are not there naturally, but they are just found there concentrated in bee valves and through the bee valves they are transmitted to humans. So the problem of uh, these zoonotic uh, parasites is that they are existing for decades and for decades we know about them but they were always considered as something trivial. So there were no much funding uh, foundings for the research and practically even now we don't know much about them. Uh, however, why they are emerging now, not before, so it's not that they were not here even before, but with the new diagnostic techniques available today in uh, different hospitals, we are, which are more sensitive, we are able to detect them more easily. Also, there is an increase in fish consumption, uh, moreover, of thermically unprocessed food, and of course, there is the other effect that we are more um, um, more careful to conserve the final host which are cetacean whales and dolphins so the final host population is also increasing european food safety agency a couple of years ago uh, summoned up a scientific board of experts uh, for biological hazard uh, that gave a scientific opinion on uh, different parasites that are uh, foodborne. Among them, Anisakis was the number one. So even in 2010, there was still a need to go and research the very baseline uh, studies about Anisakis, the geographical distribution, prevalences, abundances, 
how the techniques uh, can uh, limit Anizakis and how the, in the technology we can have um, a better method, uh, methods and treatments to inactivate the parasites. So shortly just a few slides about Anizakis. Um, it's belonging to uh, genus Anizakis and is uh, infecting alimentary tract of aquatic homeothermic vertebrates, which means that the final host are only dolphins and whales. So the fish is not the final host, it's paratenic or transport host. However, Pseudoteranova and uh, Contrasicum are also uh, pathogens for uh, uh, for for men. However, they are not uh, belonging to genus Anisakis. There are uh, for now recognized nine species in Mediterranean. Anisakis simplex and uh, and Anisakis pegrefi are the number one. Uh, this is important because it is said and it's, it is believed, although scientifically it was not so much clearly uh, evidence, that Anizaki simplex is more pathogenic. Uh, it is uh, able to migrate through the uh, fish fillets more easily than Anizaki pegrefi. And the problem is that in fish you will always find larvae of Anizakis, which are not... Uh, easily detectable by morphology between species. So you cannot distinguish uh, if it's simplex or pegrefi. These four, okay, maybe we can go with the video number one. This is just a short video that was developed in the frame of FP7 uh, project parasites and it describes the life cycle of Anizakis. It's quite short, but for you just to have an idea how it goes. So this is the male, main uh, culprit, the dolphin. There is the egg, larvae that is eaten by the crustacean and the fish which is paratenic host. And then again, the cycle goes to the final host. Of course, in that cycle, man goes uh, in between the fish and the dolphin. So humans are just accidentally infected. The parasite cannot complete the life cycle inside the human, but can cause much trouble. Uh, we can go switch to the presentation. Thank you. So the larvae are the ones that are infecting fish and that are infecting uh, uh, humans. Um, only by molecular methods we can distinguish between uh, species of larvae. Uh, much work was done by uh, Dr. Esa Simonetta Matiucci, uh, Lia Paggi and Nascetti. So the main breakthrough in this molecular uh, identification was done by a uh, University of Rome. Uh, in Adriatic we are uh, almost the only in eastern part of Adriatic, we are the only one uh, doing assessment and geographical distribution of Anizakis in different uh, commercially important fish species. It was uh, done in the frame of a national project called ANGEL. ANGEL comes from the acronym Anizakis Genomic Epidemiology, so it doesn't have anything much to do with angels. However, you can see here the species that we have assessed. Uh, we have uh, searched a lot in tuna and you can notice uh, that the prevalence and abundance in tuna are decreasing over the period of farming. We are not sure why. Is it because tuna have quite nice immunity? Because tuna are also fed during their farming with the fish that is fresh. So a part is by uh, frozen fish and other part is with the fresh bite fish. Um, Interesting is the situation between anchovy and sardines. You can see that in fillets, anchovy can have much more anisakis than sardines. And then we have assessed also anisakis in uh, different species of mackerel, whiting, uh, hake, and some uh, cephalopods. And also in some other less economically important fish, but that are, for example, in some location, uh, eaten as uh, dried or marinated and so on. We have many data and lots of that was already published. 
Uh, and this is what uh, Andrea said that it's going to shock you. And indeed, this is just a sample of parasite that was taken from the stomach of a dolphin. You can see uh, the serosa of uh, stomach is that uh, yellow, yellow area. And this is just an, an ulceration. So an ulcer from where the anisakis uh, comes out. And these are uh, adult parasites. So they have closed their cycle in the, in the dolphin. Also, uh, to, be, uh, to be safe, uh, I can say that uh, uh, in frame of uh, FP7 project called Parasite, we have assessed geographic distribution of species of Anisakis in the whole Mediterranean and part of the Atlantic. So we have monitored like 25 fish species of economic importance uh, during three years and uh, except uh, my institute, also University of Rome, SISIC uh, from uh, Spain, ANSES in France and NIFES from Bergen where, from Norway were involved. And uh, in total, uh, we have uh, here these, these numbers that, uh, for example, the prevalence was between 13% up to 67, so the whiting was the most infected. Also, we have uh, molecularly identified using uh, mitochondrial marker uh, 7,000 and something larvae. And all this data uh, you can access through the website here, it's Parasite Project, but we have also compiled or uh, developed a database with all this data. So it's called biobanking and you can see there uh, actually the physical nematode, the parts of nematode went in those uh, databases with all the geographic data distribution, the host, the host land, uh, everything, and also the DNA sequencing data. So um, I will switch now to the problem in, uh, in people. Uh, the disease is called anisakiasis or anisakidosis, and it's just an accidental disease. However, in maybe two and a half decades has been in focus uh, in of uh, medicalized. So after two days, practically after accidental inge inge ingestion of uh, live larvae, uh, people develop sym symptoms. Uh, although the disease has been known uh, from uh, 1960 and it was called eosinophilic gastroenteritis. You can see here that the data about the incidence in Europe, Japan and USA are quite old. So the numbers are probably much more higher now. Uh, nice, really uh, traditionally very tasty uh, staple dish that are usually the main cause of anisakis are listed here. Sushi, sashimi, different uh, kinds of carpaccio, marinated salted pickle or uh, anchovy, smoked fermented herring, dry salmon, uh, salmon, then raw salmon or ceviche. So really some national staple food that everyone wants to, wants to taste. Um, we have uh, also harmonized the um, detection method uh, for finding out the load of anisakis in fillets. And you can see that uh, little whitish uh, worms that are fluorescing under the UV light are here the anisakis. Uh, we can maybe go with the second video where you are going to see how the method functions. It's quite easy and it's most sensitive to detect anisakis. You need to fillet your fish, thank you. Uh, put it in a plastic bag. And put it under the uh, hy hydraulic press. You press it down, then you have like huge carpaccio in the bag which you put first in a freezer for 24 hours and then under the UV, UV light. And uh, the parasite emits a kind of uh, fluorescence which is then easily... Uh, yeah. 
but it needs to be frozen over the night before it starts to emit UV light. And this is the pathology in men all over the Europe. The data were taken from D'Amico et Altri from 2014. And actually, if you see here the estimated incidence in Europe, it's only 0.038%. However, that is equi uh, equivalent to uh, 20 cases per country per year in Europe. However, lots of data is missing. Uh, I have um, collected here the data for Spain, for France, for Croatia and uh, Italy. For example, in Spain there is uh, lots of uh, data about uh, allergies, allergies uh, on anisakis, while acute uh, cases were not so much um, studied. But you see here that uh, there are like 65 cases uh, up to 2003. In Italy, there were a couple of uh, cases reported, uh, sorry, 54 cases reported a couple of years ago, which were associated with thermally unprocessed anchovies, herring and mackerel. Uh, in France, for example, there were a couple of massive infections also through the um, unprocessed, thermally unprocessed fish. And in Croatia, so far, there were only two cases. However, we have monitored the zero prevalence of antibodies for anisakis in coastal population, and the zero prevalence goes up to 2.5. So this is uh, the last video that I'm going to show you. It's about uh, what anisakis can do in, uh, in humans. So, of course, it goes up to the intestine. It, it tries to migrate through the intestine, but it's going to die in four, year, four weeks. However, there is a huge immune response. There are eosinophiles that are secreting cytokines, and there is a really, really intense immune response with the localized gastroenteritis. But eventually, immune cells do kill the parasites. In this process, they, you know, induce a generalized re immune reaction, inflammatory reaction in the bowel. And this is, these are the symptoms, so urticaria, angioedema, diarrhea and abd abdominal pain. However, everything lasts up to four weeks. So if you don't go to the doctor after four weeks, it's going to disappear. So <laughs> you can choose the option. <laughs> and here are the control measures. So they are, uh, the whole process is nicely regulated by European community and the US Food and Drugs Administration. <coughs> You can notice, for example, that the regulations in the U.S. are more strict than in uh, European communities. So everything which is uh, intended for marinating or salting needs to be frozen uh, up to 24, uh, more than 24 hours at minus 20 in Europe or even uh, more than 7 days if it's 23, minus 23 degrees in U.S. Uh, I won't go in details in other um, foodborne parasites uh, except Anisakis, but this is because uh, my colleague uh, from uh, University of Bologna uh, presented this very interesting uh, talk in um, Symposium of Fish Parasites uh, that was held in Valencia uh, a month ago. And actually they have found different zoonotic helminths in some lacustrine fish from northern Italy. I think it's uh, more or less from uh, Lago di Como. And uh, one is a tape form and the second one is the Diginian. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. The research done and presented here was uh, done through FP7 Parasite and the Croatian National Foundation uh, that founded ANGEL. Thank you very much.
Grazie Ivona per le immagini anche Ivona for the images a bit shocking let's say so now Ching will take the floor and she will say something about how to to defend ourselves May I say a couple of words to introduce the presentation First of all, I would like to thank you for accepting my invitation. Maria Ching um, Villanueva works in a group of research and she makes a pioneering activity for Europe on the possibility to use um, the um, boats because here we talked about uh, wild livestock, uh, wild fish stocks, and not the products of the aquaculture, because as I said, this is a pioneering activity that allowed to use the fish boat as able to monitor the marine environment on the on these uh, fish boats when the fish activities are made. So in the domain of a national <coughs> project and the, this project named Ritmare, I am responsible of an activity concerning the development of uh, devices to be installed on these fishing boats with the aim of the uh, environmental monitoring in the fishing sector, which has some effects in terms of analysis of uh, the data that can be done, especially on the sustainability of the exploitation of the fishing uh, stocks. But in any case, we have consequences and possible applications concerning the traceability traceability, so that's why I wanted so much Maria Ching here, her presence here, so I'll, I would like to thank her again and I uh, will give her the floor in order to explain in a pioneering way what she could develop, what her group could develop on these issues. Grazie. Like to thank you Buongiorno, again for me and uh, Dino for that uh, very good introduction. Thank you very much. Yes. I'm really very honored. So I would uh, present something which is actually, I'm a bit, I have to say, a bit uh, um, envious of my uh, colleagues Salua and Ivona because uh, they have really developed a lot of things which actually uh, we are thinking of, but actually our laboratory is not very well equipped with this um, uh, biotechnological or instrument, but we are actually thinking about it, but we, with the um, um, with, um, research that is actually developed in the laboratory, we don't know how to, how to in, in fact fuse it with that, but probably I can talk with you about it later. So I would present uh, RecoPesca, so this is actually a computerized uh, tool uh, uh, and uh, uh, or uh, uh, a computerized database, which is actually developed in, uh, at IFREMER. So this is since in 2005. And we wanted to use this tool to develop some traceability tool, if it's possible. So we are actually just starting, because um, it's a bit complicated, uh, you would see. Um, so uh, again, I would like, I'd like to thank Yvonne and Salua because they have uh, given a very good introduction about what is the importance of uh, traceability and of course why is it very, very, very uh, in vogue now and why are uh, there are a lot of countries uh, who are actually um, making this a very important um, uh, research or uh, a, a project. So. Uh, in France, uh, I was uh, so surprised because uh, when uh, we st I, I started looking into this, I was uh, so surprised that there was very little known about the, uh, the traceability in France. Uh, you cannot really find any ve very good research, for example, about this. I mean, there are uh, uh, aqu aquaculture um, agencies who does, uh, of course, some surveys to, for, for traceability, but it's not really, it's not really very um, um, 
explicit as to if we compare it to the agro, uh, agriculture um, uh, department, especially after the vash fall or the, 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 the thing would happen about the, the beef uh, scandal in France recently. So they are really very, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, in France, they're really, really very interested in this traceability, but I think it's very much advanced in the case of the agro, uh, agriculture rather than in, in the fisheries. So, of course, traceability, uh, as uh, you can see, uh, can be associated to many attributes. So we want to know where it comes uh, from, uh, why can it contribute to the increase of prices. Uh, for the fisheries, of course, we are interested to find out what kind of methods have been done. And this is a sort of uh, a guarantee, actually, to the consumers, because it can indicate when uh, uh, or it should indicate when it was actually captured. And that, of course, would sort of give some information about the, the safety and the risk of, uh, of these products. But what I found out when I was starting to research about this in France is that uh, most thing you can find is that there are a lot of seafood fraud in France. So we're not actually very good in this traceability at this moment. Uh, uh, especially for the um, uh, uh, marine fish product or fresh product. Uh, so se somebody actually in the uh, UK had uh, done a research, but this is uh, actually in 2010, and he compared uh, several countries, including Italy, Spain, and Ireland, and UK. So apparently from his research, he, he had uh, several uh, um, uh, samples, people actually, uh, or fish. So he found out, in fact, that in France, it's still very low compared to uh, Italy or Spain, where, where actually it's about 32 to 30 uh, percent, respectively, compared to other uh, European countries. So in France, what uh, he uh, actually observed was that it occurs mainly in uh, Atlantic Cods, where this is replaced by haddocks and hake, and for bluefin tuna, which costs really very expensive, they replace it with, uh, yeah, with albacore and big eye uh, tuna, but they sell it with, uh, at this high price, which is uh, actually scandalous. But of course, our, a regular consumer cannot really dissociate this and cannot really say anything about this. So this is actually uh, how, um, how uh, fish, fish catches is typically sold in markets in France. So as you can see, uh, I don't know if it's really very cle clear, but here they just put the name actually of the, the fish. And then what you can really see is, for example, the price. But we, uh, unlike with the agriculture uh, uh, um, products, we don't even know where they came from. And then, I mean, only a bit of the consumers would ask, where, where's this fish? And then they would just say, oh, in the Atlantic, but where? So we don't know. So especially, uh, it, it's very difficult. So they just buy it like this. And I have to say that compared to um, aquaculture products, which are all often uh, sold frozen in France, uh, fresh fishes like this are really very expensive. I mean, it's not for the regular consumers. It's, it's I mean, uh, I, I think that if uh, a family can consume one uh, fish meal per week, I mean, that's really something uh, 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 um, uh, middle, well, higher standard because you cannot really uh, afford it so much. So I think that if we can sell this much uh, of the product, I think that we should also provide some, some sort of traceability of information for, uh, for the consumers. So, uh, I sort of started to ask uh, why improve, of course, what is the in interest of improving seafood traceability? Of course, there's, um, uh, at least in France, I can say this, that there is an increasing uh, uh, reflection or incentive uh, as of reflection uh, by the social uh, or the consumer. So, of course, there is this globalization concern. There is an ex uh, a concern about where does this product really come from? And then there are more and more people who's buying these products who wanted to have more guarantee and who wanted to, of course, hearing about, uh, for example, the talk that you give, you've given 
about the diseases that we can get and, and sort of those stuff. We want to have a better idea about the quality of the products that we are buying and we are eating. So there are also some sensitivity problems, uh, like you said, about the environment so, and with these resources. So uh, uh, one of the very um, uh, um, uh, recently invoked thing it in France is this uh, importance given to local produced products. So it seems that uh, a lot of people are some sort of publicizing, uh, uh, giving guarantees. For example, is, does it come from uh, durable, sustainable fishing? Uh, was it fed really, uh, uh, really, uh, what kind of food was it fed? It, is it really uh, coming from biologic sources and, you know, safer sources? So you have these labels that are actually giving, giving you the idea that, okay, this is uh, highly priced and this was really uh, um, conditioned or fished in a very... Uh, and transported in a very, very good way. So there, are, there is the guarantee of the quality of taste when you buy them. So even in the aquacultures and, and stuff like this, so there are actually um, um, a lot of um, publicities going out. And um, um, so this is one of the concerns, in fact, uh, why I, I thought that traceability is actually a very good subject or research where we should actually uh, devote a lot of time. So this is uh, actually from uh, France Agrimer. So they are actually uh, um, an institute who's re really working more on um, comparing wildlife and farmed um, um, fish products. So actually these are some criteria that they have um, indicated which are really, um, which are really uh, sort of like influencing uh, the the behavior of the consumers, why they would buy. So um, aquaculture products are, 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 are actually being bought uh, more and more these days because as I said, uh, fresh fish, fish products, especially seafoods, are really very expensive. And sometimes you just find them as a filet. So you don't really get the whole fish. So mostly it's actually uh, the price and the aspect. But as you can, uh, sorry, but as you can see here, uh, um, there is there are a lot of, of of questions now that are are being asked by consumers. So they are more and more interested about, for example, who fished this, uh, uh, what kind of fishermen, what kind of, uh, for example. Uh, um, nets or uh, trolls was used, so how? So there are questions about where was this fish because it's sort of like a, a, a related question to what, when was it fish? Because if the fisherman actually goes further, so you can be sure that in fact the freshness of the fish is not really very, very good or very immediate. So they're also interested about what kind of fish are being fished. So, um, so Recopesca in, uh, in uh, Ephremer, actually in my laboratory, this is developed and uh, started to be developed in 2005. So the initial, um, the initial uh, um, interest about this is that we wanted to really improve the knowledge of the spatial distribution of the fishing effort and catches, and these are mainly in the beginning for scientific purposes, of course. So this project is what we call a participative approach. So we actually go near uh, the, the fishermen or fisher owner, and we ask them if they are interested to, uh, to put in their boats uh, this um, uh, tools, uh, probes, sensors that we developed, and if they want to participate actually in this, in this project. So, um, uh, uh, so this is, uh, uh, like I said, an autonomous system for trawlers, uh, uh, potters, and gillnets. So you can see that here that um, it's about 10 years going on now, but we have just actually, ha we, we are, have actually 100 only of this uh, voluntary fishermen. So after 15 years, it's really very, very difficult to convince them. It's very sensitive, I think. Uh, they're not very uh, uh, open to when do they really fish the fish or, or, or about where do they fish it. I think it goes, in hand, uh, goes hand in hand with, uh, with the quotas every year, which is being uh, given by the... Oh, 
Oh yeah, yeah, but this is actually something which is okay uh, for boats, which is about tw uh, 12 meters and up. But, but so we can actually trace them. But you know, it, we, we would like to have more uh, information such as we can have an idea of the fishing effort, how much are really they are uh, catching in the, in the sea. So, uh, so we have a GPS position, so uh, uh, we have a GPS uh, machine, so we want to find out, in fact, the uh, immersion time, the, net, the, le the length of the net, because if it's, of, of course, bigger, then they would catch more, the weight of the catch, and there are environmental measurements that we wanted to, get, to also get at the same time while they're fishing, such as the temperature, salinity, and the turbidity, uh, prof uh, sorry, what happened? <laughs> is this me? I'm talking too much, probably. And so these, uh, <laughs> there are radio communications uh, um, uh, um, actually uh, installed, uh, automated data transfer, and uh, of course, uh, these are these data are actually communicated through a uh, radio link on board and to uh, actually uh, Ephraimer station at Brest. So how's the, how does this work? So. Uh, so actually we have probes which are installed on the nets and this collects actually the depths and the temperature and the salinity. And we also have other probes. This is the howler counter which is actually implemented on the howler which uh, actually give us the uh, idea uh, about the length of the, the, length of the fishing time uh, and actually where are they fishing. So we, uh, we, uh, if we can, because uh, you have to understand that uh, all boats are actually, uh, uh, not all boats are actually made the same. So sometimes it's not, it's not actually possible to put all these tools in one boat. Sometimes we can just put, put the scale, sometimes we can just put uh, the, the probes or something. And then, of course, this uh, onboard scale is actually to measure how much is being caused, uh, co uh, caught. So we have a, a sort of a concentrator of this data. So this uh, indicates actually the GPS positioning of, uh, of, uh, of the boat. And this is uh, actually directly communicated to our Resco Pesca, Pesca data center. So this picture is actually taken right just near to our, uh, at our institute in Brest. So these are really uh, communicated uh, directly and immediately after, uh, during fishing, um, uh, the fishing activity. So, of course, uh, uh, we think that this uh, tool is, of course, a multidisciplinary tool. It, it's really a very innovative tool for us. Um, uh, it's interesting because it's quite affordable at, uh, as of the moment. So I think that the installation of all these um, equipment tools on boats would cost around 2,000 euros. And the deployment of the network is, uh, of course, there is a, a sampling plan established and, and uh, we are actually uh, motivating uh, to mobilize the fishermen and, and we are happy. We were, we were actually vying after five years to have more than 300 vessels, but it was really complicated. I mean, most of the fishermen are really ve very sensitive, secretive about their, their data, so they are not really very open and willing to share uh, actually a lot of this information. So what we, w what we thought, how, how can we, how can we uh, improve actually the traceability of this product? So we have this Resco Pesca um, uh, tool, which is actually existing in 2005. So um, discussing with my, one of my colleagues, so this is actually in the very early stages. So we wanted to probably, uh, um, um, uh, develop something, uh, something more, um, uh, let's say, uh, in vogue such that we can actually distribute it to a lot of uh, consumers. We, uh, the idea is to have this thing really um, uh, uh, freely available, which, is, which can easily be um, downloaded on your telephone. This is uh, something that can probably help the consumers to trace uh, the, the, um, the provenance or actually uh, the sources of the fishes wh wh which they actually buy in the supermarkets. So 
as I said here, the idea is to pro provide volunteer fishers the opportunity to correct, uh, communicate directly. So since we are asking for voluntary fisheries, so these voluntary fishers, fishermen, we can probably ask them to um, communicate some more of this information to us, like where they fish, how much they fish, what kind of fish do they fish, and where do they distribute it, actually. So um, with the development of this fish code, we thought of probably a good way is to um, provide uh, a unique or personal code for the fishermen. So from these flash codes, uh, you can actually um, um, you can, they can actually uh, provide information which we can make available online. Uh, uh, information such as the fish label, so they would really know what kind of fish is being fished. Uh, uh, where was it? Uh, where was it? Uh, it uh, wh where was it landed? What stall number? What fishing area? Uh, and that uh, this is we plan something which is really very easy to use. So we wanted to develop it actually in a in a mobile phone or smartphone such that um, a lot of consumers can download the the, the, the software and then can use it when they're, while they're uh, actually buying their fish uh, products. So um, about the implementation, we are still arguing about this <laughs> because, uh, sorry, okay. Uh, so uh, this is actually how we wanted to put it, something like a, a, a sort of a barcode, then you use your telephone number. I think I, I would be finished soon. So uh, this is what uh, hopefully will, will be, will be uh, actually um, shown uh, on your phone uh, when you download this application. So it would show you more or less the area or the geolocalized area where this is fished. And then some fisherman information, so uh, where, we, where is it actually uh, fish. And then probably uh, give some culinary receipts. S some information, so something like that. So, as a conclusion. <laughs> so, we hope that this would provide some more information. Uh, of course, in case the safe safety and uh, lower the risk uh, to consumers. So, um, of course, uh, this is, uh, although this information uh, have, have been said uh, in a lot of regla EU regulation that it should be mandatory, it's not really true with, fish with fisheries product. So what we want to motivate it, it here is that we want to use what um, uh, tool we have actually available now and try, uh, try to uh, develop supporting tools for this such that we can probably contribute to the improvement of traceability in France. Thank you. I'm sorry for taking so much of your time. Grazie. Scusami, ma io ero distratto. I'm sorry, but I um, got distracted listening to what you were saying and they told me to um, tell you to, to finish. Thank you for the information you have given us, which um, ensure that we are establishing some systems to protect us from uh, several dangers and risks. Now give the floor to Professor, to Mr. Catagnano. Mr. Catagnano from uh, uh, Department of Fish of um, Sicilian region. Just a few words to highlight how the speeches um, were very interesting because they have shown all the problems concerning production and consumption of fish and a very um, topical um, problem concerning traceability and the tools to implement in order to have a um, very safe product. It is clear that a public administration can use the tools which have been implemented and uh, which are um, going to be implemented by the European Union, these um, tools are um, aimed at uh, uh, dealing with these issues and at making them and at reducing the risk of uh, a consumption of uh, a fish having contaminants which can be very diversified, the most um, uh, um, scary ones are the ones concerning the Anisakis, but we know that there are eaten contaminants, especially when we talk about um, um, farmed fish 
and wild fish, so chemical contaminants and uh, um, other um, types of uh, contaminants which can affect the health of consumers. Uh, the tools at our disposal are many, uh, such as the tools uh, coming from this new um, planning which we are going to start, that of the European Fund, the FAMP, for, um, so the European Fund for Fishery. After concluding uh, one uh, phase, which I'm going to uh, concerning um, a, fun, a fund for um, a fishery, which uh, didn't achieve a great results. Uh, well, it has had important results, but not the expected results. Of course, we must improve the new um, programming. And this concern all sectors, uh, fishery and aquaculture. Aquaculture, well, both um, topics, but especially aquaculture is a very important topic because um, after, because uh, following um, a, a difficult management of uh, uh, fishery, um, the difficulty in using sustainable uh, tools, well, um, aquaculture it becomes one of the um, most important productive elements which must be strengthened. And of course, we must not neglect uh, the fishery sector, which still represents a very important component. Of course, um, um, seafood is linked to the environmental management. What are the actions that we can implement, uh, the actions that this programming uh, um, sets? And um, we will continue the activities already started with the ONFAP, the previous programming. And as I was saying, it is important to um, establish some systems and to better plan than in the past. We are trying to do this in our department. We will try as much as we can. And even if And um, uh, even if we do not have much experience in this field, um, we will uh, do as much as we can. We are having a lot of meetings, and uh, we hope we could make uh, this um, effort uh, more concrete. So we will try to deal with the problems concerning two big um, fields by using the funds by the European uh, Union. But there can also be other funds um, that we can uh, use. So from this point of view, the sea and air will, uh, will find in us, and I hope this has already been perceived by you, so uh, the CNR will have um, in us um, will find great um, availability from us. I was realizing uh, that um, a lot must be done, especially in the communication uh, phase. And one of the graphs which um, was projected, uh, Mrs. Villanueva, on the perception degree by the consumers is very significant. So I look at the uh, shape and then the price, or I look at the price and then at the uh, shape, the aspect of fish. So we, we take a lot of attention into the aesthetics of fish, but um, there are many indicators showing the quality of fish. So um, we always, uh, um, we always um, listen to our tradition, that is, we must look at the fish and see the aspect of the fish, the aesthetics of the fish. But of course, there are many hidden indicators which must be taken into account. And so a better communication concerning the indicators is fundamental. Of course, the price will always be important when we purchase something. Of course, the choice is always made depending on price. but. Uh, we must uh, um, rely on a on quality element that is the traceability, the labeling, and also the origin component is important. Everything is included in the label. So label and traceability is very important, even if it is not well known and not many people uh, pay attention 
uh, draw, um, pays attention to this aspect, uh, the aspect of labeling. So I realize this is something which concerns other aspects of production. Uh, label is difficult to understand because uh, um, we do not understand many things, so we miss the importance of some indicators, but behind uh, those indicators and that communication, there are important regulations, um, important uh, laws. So for example, if we take into account uh, the origin, if I consider as origin the geographical coordinates, well, this means that I don't know much. Uh, so um, sometimes it is very difficult for the consumers to understand one label. So I believe that a lot of work must still be done. And from this point of view, my department, which I represent today, will, um, um, will be uh, willing to give you all its uh, support. So thank you. Unfortunately, I have to leave. And thank you. I thank you, Mr. Catagnano. So now we can uh, continue. But first of all, I would like to recall that not only the CNR but also the university was involved uh, yes of course of course and in this regard uh, we are patenting uh, a smart packaging uh, with the label which uh, changes color depending on the conservation days of fish so it's the fish that uh, uh, produces some substances that make the color change so we are uh, giving uh, the consumers a lot of tools uh, to be sure about uh, his or her um, consumption. So Giovanni, now you have the floor. I'd like to invite, um, so that's the chair of region. So I would like to invite another representative of region to sit here. Architect Tornabene was here. Welcome. Uh, we can uh, continue with the second session of um, this meeting. I will be the chairman. This uh, roundtable will is focusing on um, um, the fish uh, system, uh, fishery, aquaculture, and today we're going to talk with. Uh, experts, representatives of institutions and uh, universities. Uh, I see University of Palermo, Catania, but also representatives from uh, countries of the southern shore of the Mediterranean Sea, companies that took part in this important uh, project concerning uh, the system of blue economy. So. Um, we were talking about quality, quality and health. This is the topic we have set for these uh, meetings. And of course, and this is linked with the participation um, in uh, the expo. So the topic of quality of productions is linked to health. So this is one of the central topics of um, Expo. Before starting, allow me to welcome Mr. Uh, well, Mr. Catagnano la left from the Department of Fishery, but we have other um, representatives of the region 
general uh, director of uh, the Council for Productive uh, Activities. Uh, so welcome, Mr. Ferrara, who decided to stay in the back seats um, because today there is a football match, Internet Juventus. Uh, so, and whereas in the field, we have the director, who is the protagonist of this activity concerning a blue economy architect, Dario Tornabeni. So thank you all. And we also have uh, Mrs. Stassi. Well, she, she's in the changing room. So good morning and welcome. So I'd like to thank everyone for the good organization, the topic of quality and uh, safety uh, concerning uh, um, our activities, which, is, um, which are going to be defined. Today, we are doing uh, just a focus because with uh, CNR, CNR um, the Zoo Prophylactic Institute, and the other scientific institutions, take part in this important project on which a region and uh, European Union have um, uh, believed a lot. So we have decided to, um, to, uh, to present everyone the results of these important projects. If you allow me to say something, these projects are important. Uh, these projects are aimed at changing the culture in the Mediterranean area and in the world. And we will explain why. Quality of human health, health coming from fish, seafood, um, means health of the sea. So let's start to reflect upon one topic. And I see here representatives of uh, some countries of the Mediterranean, from France to Tunisia, Croatia, Albania, etc. So there is a problem which is common to all of us, the problem to save the Mediterranean Sea. And the Mediterranean Sea, I also see Professor Carra, and um, if she says so, we can be sure about this. Well, this is the time to safeguard our, uh, to protect our sea, and we must make a common effort by institutions, the institutions, the research world, the operators must be involved, everyone must be involved, also schools, if you allow me, because there is an education problem. And uh, in this regard, I would like to welcome the students and their teachers. I also see the um, uh, director of um, a school. Uh, from Sicily, Ruggero D'Artaville, Istituto Ferrara, Istituto Ballatore. So two institutes, two schools that took part in this important competition on blue economy. Then uh, later on, we will see some uh, movies which will be projected also in uh, the um, square. Um, so uh, everyone could, uh, uh, could, um, could watch these movies, these videos. So thank you, uh, thank you guys. So we can give an applause to the students because they are the fruit of um, a piece of work which many researchers have carried out and young people, students, gave their contribution to, um, to these. So thank you again. So, um, to protect the Mediterranean Sea, um, how can we protect it? We must um, protect it if we use um, um, responsible behaviors. And um, so it's important to uh, develop the blue economy. Blue economy is a step forward compared to green economy. So the planet has gained a very important resource. We are all starting to um, to think green, but now another step is necessary, and that is blue economy, which is not the economy of the sea, as uh, many people say, 
blue economy starts from the sea, starts from the Mediterranean Sea. It was invented, and they see here components of the observatory for fishery in the Mediterranean. The blue economy was invented in 2008, was established in 2008 when the um, pact of the structural development was pre presented. The world didn't know the blue economy, but many researchers, um, more than 160 researchers took part in this project in the different scientific institutions, public and private institutions, and um, they all contributed to set a great change. So we are very happy because uh, during the approval of um, the, uh, the Pact for Destructual um, Development, the world started to be interested in blue economy. Last year, also, a um, department, um, a under a secretary um, was um, established having a responsibility on the blue economy. So the world has started to work towards the blue development. But if you allow me to say this, I'm saying this to our friends from Tunisia, Croatia, France, we're very proud to say that this initiative um, was born in Sicily in 2008. And the main experiments of blue economy uh, were, um, uh, were uh, done by these laboratories. They don't say this. Uh, they, they just work very hard. But then a friend of mine, Gunter Pauli, who um, had, um, who was working on a zero emission process, intercepted this name, Blue Economy, and um, he was the first one to uh, talk about the Blue Economy. So um, the Blue Economy is, uh, um, is an important uh, um, project. All these companies, all these research centers are experimenting a lot. So they said, after this um, big introduction, and afterwards we will present the ten, we will introduce the 10 labs and um, the research uh, projects. I um, would like to start this important round table and I would like to introduce our guests who have accepted to participate in this debate. Giuseppe Barbera from the Zooprophylactic Institute, Nino Grammatico, who represents one of the leading companies, Nino Castiglione, a great producers of tuna, a historical um, a company with great tradition and great respect and care for quality. So I invite you all to visit the factories, if you can, to understand that there are companies, high value companies, in which history, identity, family tradition uh, goes together with innovation and um, new technology. Nino Algozzino is the representative of Salvatore Algozzino, is um, a vet, um, and uh, they started the um, aquaculture in freshwater experiment. And this is an activity which, especially in Sicily, is, um, uh, will uh, be further developed. Andrea Santulli, um, he's um, a great uh, scientist. You know him very well. He's appreciated uh, all over the world. Andrea is really a great expert in the field of aquaculture. And, but he's carrying uh, a big burden because he manages one institute which is uh, decentralized, which is located in Trapani, but which thanks to his uh, uh, capacity and thanks to international projects uh, that they have uh, uh, developed has become a reference point not only for Sicily but for the old Mediterranean area. I'd like to introduce also Ines uh, uh, Ben Kemis from the National Institute. 
Science and Technology uh, from Tunisia, who's going to talk about the advantages in um, Tunisian aquaculture and uh, the importance that this activity had, the potentials which this activity can have in um, our um, friend country, Tunisia. Mr. Bernardo Patti, a great researcher with a lot of experience from the IAMC CNR in Mazzara del Vallo in Sicily. He has a long list of research in which he took part. He also led some important projects which, um, which um, made uh, sea and air very important in the world. Then Simone Mirto. And I have to say it honestly without adding anything. These are all valuable researchers because they um, participate uh, continuously and with great sensitivity uh, in spite of all difficulties uh, existing in the field of research, national research and EU research. And so often they must uh, replace um, uh, and uh, so they have to fight against uh, the lack of infrastructures, but they were very um, good in uh, developing uh, uh, this institute. And then Giuseppina Carra, she needs no, no introduction from the University of Catania. She's one of the main economists in um, agriculture. Uh, she is a professor of agrarian poli poli policy um, at the University of Cat uh, Catania, and she's the coordinator of a PhD in agro agri-food economy. She has a uh, she, she participates in uh, the scientific coordination and editorial coordination of uh, a, an international review, so a great personality. When I met her this morning, uh, she said, I'm Professor Carra, um, and I told her, you introduce yourself. Why? You don't need to introduce yourself because you're very famous. Um, so thank you, everyone, and I'll give the floor to Giuseppe Barbera. Mr. Giuseppe Barbera from the Zooprophylactic Institute is going to talk about uh, the problems related to blue economy and traceability in uh, the fishery field. Thank you so much for your invitation and for the presence, my presence and the presence of my institution here. Talking about traceability, we understood during the years, thanks to the continuous contact with the enterprises, which is the fundamental contact of what the blue economy itself is doing. And even more, this is what well, the fact that traceability uh, needs to be connected to everything else, because the traceability is the basic engine of uh, the uh, food safety and representing for the final consumers the real possibility to choose a product. Uh, sometimes I say, and this is a joke, that normally when we talk about traceability and when the consumers has to choose, it is easy that in the labor that he um, sees, Nothing is written because sometimes there are some missing points due to some factors that we all know, depending on a commercial uh, system, that is not that easy to carry out. Uh, so I was laughing and thinking about the fact uh, that when Mr. Catagnano and when uh, Mrs. Uh, Shing Villanueva said the perception of the consumer uh, on the consumer that sometimes is far from what we could really what we should really see and 
So with uh, Mr. Tumbiolo, we understood that sometimes the traceability represents a moment of very important empowerment, enhancement, and promotion of the product. And we made many examples thanks to the MCCR, uh, IMCNR, and which allowed uh, through a traced and certified product with a sure and a certain certification, we made a positive effect on the consumer. He bought a product with a high price, but actually he knew the entire history of that product. And starting from this concept of traceability in general, I would like to add that this is not just about the uh, press. This is not just the major prize. I would like to add something because this experiment that we made with the CNR and the other institutions uh, includes a quantity of uh, fish sold. So what's the paradox that the uh, good price of fish uh, was stocked and the high price fish disappeared in a while? Yes, exactly. So that's the effect that we didn't expect, honestly. And within this uh, insight, this uh, reasoning, everything allows me to analyze in a brief uh, way the activities within the blue economy and the project of the new routes towards the blue economy uh, made by the research bodies the, who, that looked at the fishing system in an organic way. Yes, the problem starts from the sea, but it ends with the, um, with the consumer. And so this concept of uh, chain uh, brought to the birth of some laboratories, 10 laboratories, and I will only mention some of them. And these laboratories consider the same sustainability and social responsibility and the promotion of the innovation. And a particular attention was paid to the Instituto Profilattico, the Profilattico Experimentale on the quality and the traceability and retraceability. And I would like to underline this aspect on food safety. And the um, uh, certifications for the market abroad. And the problem is that the Sicilian companies had some difficulties in finding some markets uh, to because of the absence of certifications, because of some aspects that could allow them to export. So in practical terms, the cost was so high and they couldn't participate in these markets. And these projects allowed uh, to talk about some important issues like the chef life in order to evaluate some new typologies of uh, uh, products uh, conservation and some other aspects on the traceability as well or the genetic uh, definition in order to avoid the uh, fraud that sometimes occur in the preparation of uh, fishing products. And these represented, and I would like to finish, one of the most important elements that we knew, uh, that we've known during the last years through this strong participation between uh, uh, institutions of research and the other institution on the other hand. So we cannot move away from these uh, cooperation. The enterprises, the companies must work together with the research. And at the same time, the research must do that because every activity is aimed at the production. And I'd like to underline it because in my activity, I work a lot with the enterprises the companies and I love when the research is more practical and allows to give a new richness to the territory. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barbera. I would like to give the floor to the companies, if you allow me to do that. And I would like to ask one question to Nino Grammatico, who is an active manager in the company Castiglione that I presented, that I introduced before. So I would like to ask which are the initiatives of the Nino Castiglione company for the system of the environmental sustainability on the one hand, but especially because they work with tuna fish. So we, when we talk about that fish, we all know that context and it is a very delicate context sometimes. But it is also aimed at the quality of the products and food safety. Yes, good morning. Good morning to uh, everybody. I would like to thank the president and the organization for having invited me in this uh, uh, workshop uh, as uh, operator in the food chain. We are a company working on uh, fish products, in, in particular tuna products, and we've been doing it for 18 years approximately. So our company pays a lot of attention on the issues of environmental sustainability. And for example, it is a certified dolphin safe and from and it's been certified for many decades and this means that the product doesn't involve the capture of dolphins and during the time this uh, wasn't enough and so we try to work with international and local organizations as the one of uh, president tumbiolo and we uh, started to talk about blue economy and to work with Greenpeace so that our stocks uh, could be traced and able to support the fish reserves from this point of view. And then we equipped ourselves with the certifications of a certain level such as the Franto Desi certification which is a non-profit organization on a voluntary basis that allows us to go towards a product that doesn't have any kind of problems like uh, over exploited fish and we uh, use those areas in the Pacific and the Indian Oceans and partially the Atlantic uh, see where the product doesn't have risks of extension or over exploitation and then we try to uh, affect those areas that in the past weren't affected so those areas uh, where we didn't intervene in the past in for the uh, fishing of uh, tuna because in the past we used uh, some other methods of uh, uh, fishery and now we have the possibility to have fish uh, from particular areas like the RFO 71 in the Pacific Sea or uh, by using some hand lines so a uh, fishery by hand that gives you the idea of the sensitivity of our company in order to try to uh, not to touch the tuna reserves. So with uh, the University of Palermo in the person of uh, Mr. Tantulli, we are having a very intense collaboration concerning on the one hand the quality and safety of products but at the, on the other hand, they need, because we work on different typologies of tuna, the entire tuna and the cut and selected tuna, frozen and deep frozen, and then the uh, pre-cooked tuna, the loins tuna, 
uh, that arrive uh, package, uh, even though we have the traceability needed, we have the need to understand which is the the dimension of the muscular uh, fiber in order to see, to understand which is the uh, initial fish, because we uh, gave ourselves one input to work with tuna that uh, reached uh, the uh, sexual maturity. Because if we exploit the fish results under these uh, 15 kilos, let's say, we would be a company that, um, well, maybe our company is not that important at the global level, but of course our sector and our company is in the condition in which we uh, could uh, exploit too much the results and then we could have a huge problem. And in terms of traceability, we move a bit forward because now we work in Sicily, in the western part of uh, Sicily, and we certified ourselves according to the ISO 95 um, measure. So we are able, through the lots of tuna that we receive, to uh, uh, understand uh, which is the fishing boat of origin of the raw material. And this allows us to make some assessments and to understand, to know, and be sure that this product comes from certified fishing boats that are not related to some blacklists in terms of fishery, not according to the 100,000, for example. So we try to give those information to the uh, consumer through the voluntary introduction of the FAO zone of P, uh, fishery so that was this and uh, with these and with our website we could go towards the beginning of the supply chain and the production chain. So from this point of view we launched a, a process that tries to join environmental sustainability with uh, the parameters of quality and safety with uh, which we uh, collaborate with every institution, the BAT and the CNR of Marsala, the University of Palermo, because we understood that we should talk about this issue at, uh, let's say, globally, so as not to be uh, to have pro troubles and to be transparent from the point of view of the processing of a product. Because sometimes uh, companies are, uh, we said that the companies work without taking into account the parameters of safety and sustainability. And in order to finish, I would like to give you a, f a brief insight on our quality issues. And luckily, uh, compared to the speeches that we had, we do not have troubles of anisakis or uh, heavy metals. And maybe we could have some troubles in terms of um, bacteria, but not uh, heavy metals. And so the monitoring that the uh, company applies and in particular the yellow fin tuna, the tunus albacares, which is the scientific species. And from this point of view, this offers great guarantees to the consumer of a very healthy products. Of course, the chain must be respected in terms of uh, the uh, frozen chain. So if the product has some troubles, one of the most important parameters to take into account is the histamine product yeah, parameter. So we make a uh, hundred percent check for every lot, but we should do it on heavy metals as well because we could have an hypothesis where Mr. Barbera smiles that because we had uh, a little problem that we succeeded into solving because <laughs> so
So to conclude, the University of Palermo is helping us so much in order to establish the uh, term of the product uh, after uh, after the, the product is open because we do not have monitorings on the product after the opening of the package because we have for example a term of five years or three years but we should know and we should verify this data and thanks to Mr. Santulli we are implementing this thing and after the mm, the can is open. We do not know the uh, exact date of expiration. So I think that this could be helpful for us to to use everything that we need in order to have a healthier product from the quality and the hygienic or sanitary point of view. Just an insight. What well, you two it's not the University of Palermo, it's the institution of Trapani of biology. It is different. What well, we s suspected that this lack of knowledge of the term of the can when opened maybe Mr. Santulli has many cans in his fridge in order to to understand that, to make some, uh, yeah, it's a consumer test. That's the scientific name. So I would like to give the floor to the other company that we have here today, participating in the activities promoted by the Center of Competencies um, with uh, Vincenzo Fazio, and in. The company Algozino is making a very interesting experiment because there's an area of news <coughs> compared to a uh, fishing and a fishery system in Sicily that is, let's say, standardized. And uh, at the contrary, their work is uh, one of the first experiments of aquaculture in internal seas internal waters. So I'd like to ask him, what do you think about that? What are the first inputs that you would like to give in the implementation of this activity? And most of all, uh, we should put this activity, in, in this activity should be related to the territory. Thank you so much, Giovanni. Thank you to the Department of Fishery for this opportunity that we have today to participate in this important uh, roundtable. That, yeah, that's the region, uh, of course, but the district of fishery in a particular way because they welcome as the, um, my company, Algozino Salvatore. <laughs> There's just one company. And this company uh, works with the aquaculture in the internal waters. There's a financing of the FEP 2.1 2007-2013, and it launches uh, an important path. Sometimes we talk about seas and mountains, and sometimes we talk about mountains and seas, because for the ex <coughs> province of Enna, an area well known for the agriculture where this activity represents 60% of the internal uh, GPI. So a company converts its uh, path of uh, entrepreneurship by working on the aquaculture. So the, uh, in this process we have seven artificial lakes and so this creates a territorial difference and in this province with the 150,000 inhabitants we have 
1,000 licenses for fishing, and this determines, uh, determines the factor of analysis of the sector. So the aquaculture defined as uh, agricultural activity uh, under the uh, Italian law, this allows to the agricultural companies to diversify and to invest in European funds for fishery. Our aim starts from the need to certificate the healthiness of our waters, because if this is the case, it will be healthy for the activities aimed at the uh, drinkable water, and it is uh, water that could be useful for the agriculture as well. But an important input that I had from my studies is the importance of water from a so technical point of view. And our, the institution uh, wants to certify that the waters that are fit for food are healthy during the process of certification and, it on it and um, of these uh, waters. So, considering a legislative degree on these waters, we know that we have in the certification of the Zooprophylactic uh, Institution, we have a water that is destined to produce salmons. And we uh, try to have a company that could give for uh, food purposes and purposes of conservation of the biodiversity and repopulation for the uh, lakes, uh, uh, one company that could have an open and uh, closed cycle as well in order to have a future transformation at the internal, in the internal side as for the product to be destined to the distribution but also for an internal consumption, because as you all know, the agricultural activities uh, expect 5% uh, of direct uh, sale of the product. And this is part of a natural context that is uh, certified by the entrance of waters, and we have its reuse for agricultural purposes. So from these, we have the need of our company to have the EMAS certification. Why? Because this is the most difficult to follow, but this gives the logo of the biological aquaculture to the companies. So through this business card, let's say, our uh, research and the competence of our district is important so as to arrive at this certification and this represents an important uh, part of for the certification of the quality and the development of the territory uh, although considering that the important thing is that everything is supported by a degree number 164 that uh, mm, expects to have some consortiums of fishery that could be seen as regional or, or province acknowledgements. And these consortiums have uh, a great collaboration and they can manage in an autonomous way the incomes from the licenses of fishery. And so they could be a body of control for the region for a correct management of fishery and aquaculture in the internal seas. As a, a territorial development, we have a lot to do, but we have the, a good starting point so, as, so that our startup company can be important for our territory. Thank you. Mr. Agaruzzino, I would like to ask some question to Andrea Santulli. The quality of the product in the aquaculture, can it represent, really represent an instrument for the development of the uh, 
aquacultural system in itself, talking about the Mediterranean region. The objective is, is uh, certification, but we must get prepared to certification and uh, we must demonstrate that what we propose is real. We must demonstrate that fish um, farmed in Sicily is um, high quality. We had the possibility to um, compare our pro products through a project funded by um, the ministry, which allowed us to, um, to verify the quality of the sea buses. And together with other operational units, uh, we analyzed uh, the quality of sea buses in uh, several farming uh, um, factories. And the Sicilian product uh, is um, a product which used to, um, to, to rank among the first, the, the, the highest um, in Italy. Why? Because it is farmed uh, with excellence in clean uh, water, waters and by taking into account that if it is a quality fish, it is sold, otherwise it is not sold. And so the farmer takes into account what he does, takes into account the feed he gives to the fish. And at national level, it is a high quality, high quality fish. And then we have the possibility offered by the collaboration Italy-Tunisia with which, through which, in the first time, together with the um, National uh, Institute of um, uh, Science and Technology of the Sea and other institutes, we had the idea to harmonize the techniques. What does this mean? It means to, um, uh, to have uh, the same tools to um, ensure quality. We um, make analysis in our lab and um, Salwa in her lab, and the results are the same. Why? Because we use standardized procedures. And with this tool, in the other projects uh, um, uh, that was funded, uh, which is a specific project on aquaculture, we analyzed our products, Italian and Tunisian products, and we assessed that the quality was very high. But we um, were we had the curiosity. We say that our product is good, but we must demonstrate it. We must uh, compare ourselves with other markets. And so we had the idea to um, buy sea basses coming from other countries, Greece and Turkey, which uh, are the most important competitors, Malta and other countries. And we had, we were surprised to, um, to see that our products are always in um, a very high quality range. The most important competitor we had from the point of view of quality is the Croatian product. In Croatia, very qual high quality um, fish is produced because Croatia is a country where farming is uh, performed with the same, with a very high attention and they are small, um, s small factories um, where fish is farmed with the objective to produce a quality fish to, um, to uh, deal with all the other compar competitors. Turkey produces much more than Italy, um, Italy, Croatia, uh, and so what can we do? The only way to compete with them is to produce a high quality fish. We have done this together with them and uh, together with them, and our objective, our common objective, is the one which has been highlighted this morning, that is to have a certification, to have some brands which allow us to, um, to go on the market with the label stating that our fish is good. I would like to add something about inner, um, internal waters, inner waters, it seems weird that we have uh, a farming in uh, internal waters in Sicily, but there is a long experience which um, is uh, limited to two plants. In Sicily, we have a kind of autochthonous um, trout, a Sicilian trout, which exists only in Sicily and in uh, some other Mediterranean countries, such as Algeria. Maybe we do not know this, but this is something which should be Enhanced in Sicily, we invested 15,000 euro in the previous programming for aquaculture in internal waters. Now we must 
um, use this, um, put them in practice. We don't have the infrastructures. We have the plants, but we don't have the infrastructures. Uh, we have no chain. We have the plants, but we don't have the chain. We don't have the market, the consumers. The goal must be the consumer. The Sicilian consumer does not know that in Sicily also fresh water fish is produced. And so for the internal water in the next programming, we should take into account these things which are very important. So we have fresh water fish like in Tunisia. In Tunisia there is a lot of fresh water uh, fish they uh, cultivate a lot of freshwater fish, which we are enhancing with salwa, and we would like to do the same thing with the freshwater fish in Sicily when we have the right amount. Thank you for your input. I didn't um, uh, stay, uh, say this. Um, I just uh, said conservation of bio biodiversity, but I know that in that structural fund, fund but for the FEAMP and the PSR, we could um, use um, this measure. So I've already paid attention to the potential development um, to enhance that species, which from a zootechnical point of view is the worst species to choose, but in a zootechnic technical book, books we use to enhance the product, uh, it's a fish um, which uh, survives at high temperatures and must compete with uh, several autochthonous uh, species, so it will be um, the best uh, fish we will use for that production. And at the same time, our enterprise is part of uh, the Mediterranean trout research, which um, enhances uh, the, uh, different, the different evolutions of trout in um, its expressions of the Mediterranean, starting from the African one to the Marmorata in the Alps. We have spoken about farming, aquaculture, with interesting inputs, and we have also spoken about cross-border uh, cooperation between Tunisia and Sicily. I would like to ask Ines Benkemi's uh, personal curiosity. What advantages and what results has this cooperation with Sicily uh, given? Can you give us some examples? <laughs> no, with me. No, with me was uh, was an advantage. Meeting me was an advantage. Parlerò in inglese, capisco l'italiano, ma mi sento più a mio agio se parlo in inglese. So, uh, first of all, the first uh, benefits of this cooperation from Tunisia and Italy, I think as is as told uh, Andrea, is this big check-up of the quality. And this check-up, I think, is very important because it's, uh, I think, the key for the future, to defend our product. We have good products, and we are able to say it, that we have good product based on results, on data, on sampling, on, on analysis, and analysis made on uh, harmonized procedures and harmonized technique and uh, validated results. These information are useful for the authorities. I mean, to say, okay, we have a safe product. It is good for our administrations, for the, uh, the Institute of Nutrition, the, the security also. Uh, but this information are also important for the public, I mean, the consumers. And something I think which is very important is that the data are produced by public researchers. I mean, we don't have, okay, the projects of cooperation gave us the money to make this analysis. But these analyses are made, I mean, we have no more interest than the result. I mean, it's not uh, paid by the 
companies. It's paid by public money. So we produce data and we give the data, uh, I mean, they are, uh, we say it's of good quality and we, are, we have no money interest. It's just what we found. It's not like a pro uh, data given by a producer. We have somehow, uh, I would say, like um, credibility. I mean, we add to the credibility because we are public researcher. The other thing is that uh, these resu the results, which say that we have good quality product, they are also useful for the companies because now the companies, they know they have good quality and they can think about the future. One of the very, very important things that uh, we have seen in this project is that company now, they come to see us and say, we would like to see the quality of our new products or we will try other food qualities and we want to see the impact on the quality of our product. And this is very, very good because the first contact, I would say, with the companies was not easy. They were very susceptible and uh, I don't um, I don't say that today we have in a love story with them, but at least they, uh, we have a credibility with them. We have credibility with the public. We had credibility with uh, the public institutions and they are interested in working with us because they see that they have interest also they with the results. And I, I have a wish, I would say, for the future I hope that they will use this uh, tool, which is scientific analysis of their production, to understand that they have to make together the effort to try to have new markets outside Mediterranean. I think it's bad to make competition between us, between Sicilian and Tunisia. We have to make hand in, in the hand of the other and to go together to look for new marks saying we have good product. I mean, we will, the, the Norwegian will not produce sea bream and sea bass in Norway. Technically, it's possible, but it's not reasonable. I mean, it's, uh, my professor, Barnabé, uh, I made my PhD with Barnabé, he told me, you know, we have fish in the Mir uh, station. We can also produce salmon in Sa Arabia Saudi, but this is, crazy, it's not reasonable. Now I think we can say we have good quality, let's say we have reasonable production, let's go together to find new markets and new market will be new opportunity, I mean economic opportunity, which means development and I hope in a fair way because our security, I mean large, not only security about consuming fish, our security depends on how we will make development and a fair development to have every people having a future. So and I think also aquaculture can make um, a source of um, opportunity of development for the Mediterranean region. Uh, so I just want to add something what uh, said about uh, what um, uh, Ines said. It's about uh, enterprise because when we started, we didn't have too much contact with them. Now we have established convention with them, and especially for fresh water. Uh, now, uh, there are special uh, concern about freshwater species because, for example, thunder, it's a well-consumed uh, uh, product in some uh, European country. And now with the analysis we did, it is possible now for them to certificate because it's forbidden for, uh, for the sector to export such a product. Now it is possible thanks to all the analysis we did. So this is important in terms of uh, support enterprise. Um, for, uh, but also this project allowed us, I mean, this collaboration, to have another uh, project in Tunisia. 
which is quite good one. So we will continue because for the trans uh, cross border, it's limited to a zone. It's the north of Tunisia. But we had another, yes, I think thanks to the Securac ones and all the work we did, when we uh, mm, uh, looked for another project, we had uh, another uh, grant now, which is Promacqua. We should do the same in uh, Italy. And it's, uh, we had found now, we will continue to work on other uh, zone of Tunisia. This is very important, uh, other output, which is uh, made thanks to this um, project. Molte grazie. E io a tal proposito no, ho avanzato già una proposta e un'idea che era annuncio a questo tavolo, vista l'intensità della cooperazione fra la Sicilia e la Tunisia. Il dirigente generale della programmazione della regione, il dottore Vincenzo Falgares, è, è ben lieto di trovare un, una modalità per mettere eh, in rete tutte le sperimentazioni e i progetti che negli anni sono stati sviluppati intorno al tema del mare e della qualità delle produzioni ittiche e agroalimentari. E questo mi pare una, una, un utile esercizio e siamo contenti che il dottor Fagres abbia avuto questa intuizione perché ci consentirà di mettere in rete tutte quelle sperimentazioni che, che rischiano se no di rimanere a compartimenti stagno, cioè ognuno si fa il suo pezzo di ricerca e poi finisce in un cassetto o tutt'al più rimane in una bella pubblicazione. Invece questo, questa attività, e eh, invito tutti a fare questo sforzo, a cogliere questa volontà della regione siciliana per razionalizzare e mettere a frutto questo processo di tanti progetti che se non rischiano di rimanere isolati e quindi dimenticati. Detto... Prego. Noi... Noi siamo orgogliosi della nostra collaborazione che non And finirà. Our collaboration which is not going to end on the 31st of December. We committed ourselves. The region has given us the money to build a platform. We have built a platform and we committed to um, keep it for another five years. We have established a virtual lab which will um, uh, introduce um, which will participate in all calls not because we are interested in uh, gathering funds, but because the enterprises with which we have uh, agreements, both in Tunisia and Italy, and um, we will have one also with Tonino Alguzzino, so the companies will uh, keep uh, need, needing us, so we need to uh, continue to develop. This is called exit strategy, but this is not an exit strategy. It is a continuation strategy. Thank you. Now we can uh, continue this um, beautiful initiative by giving the floor to Mr. Dino Patti. I call you Dino. And I would like to ask you a question. Can we suppose a strengthening of the role of uh, scientific research supporting the sustainability of fishery activities? Thank you for the question. I would like to um, take this um, opportunity to thank the region for giving us the possibility to meet here. So I would like to thank also the speakers for their presentations. They have given us a lot of um, inputs, important inputs for our discussion. And I would like to thank also Giovanni Tumbiolo for um, underlining also a concept which is fundamental because when we talk about the quality of um, a fishery, of, um, we cannot neglect the quality of um, the, uh, the sea environment in which these uh, uh, 
these uh, quality species um, uh, grow and develop, and I'm referring to the wild um, fish stocks. I, I worked especially on the ecology of uh, small species um, such as anchovies and sardines um, to research has um, done a lot to support the sustainability of the exploitation of these resources because there is a European framework and a national framework in which all information which allow us to assess the exploitation of resources are included or to make some estimations. Um, so, some estimates, uh, such as the campaigns at sea, which allow us to, um, to, um, to analyze the biomass or many other, many other things. Um, and uh, if we talk about anchovies and sardines, uh, this is very important, so we need to monitor over time, the consistency in terms of biomass of evaporation at sea, we make some biological samples which uh, make it possible to estimate the parameters which are fundamental to assess the exploitation of resources because we were mentioning uh, um, the uh, first sexual maturity, which is an important uh, criterion which must be um, estimated in order to understand the exploitation condition of a resource. So, um, uh, the information, if the information we have um, that the researchers um, make it possible to make some assessments on the exploitation of resources, uh, um, it is often, it is true that sometimes uh, there, is, um, there are some differences between uh, the times of the campaign at sea and then the analysis um, data. Um, through the analysis of these data and also through, and also by using uh, um, dynamics of population models, we can also make some projections, some forecasts, and um, so we can um, identify some scenarios. But this type of information is um, outdated already when we start to use it. And so um, answering to your question, we need to shorten these times between the, um, analysis, the, um, the analysis data and um, the campaigns and see in order to manage them well. Uh, devices and tools like the ones presented by Mrs. Villanueva are very helpful because uh, in real time can give information on the exploitation of resources on uh, that which is called capture per unit of um, stress and uh, also the features of uh, the environment. There is also uh, another important aspect concerns uh, traceability. But, well, I was also pleased to see the slide concerning the analysis of uh, the behavior of the consumers. Because I believe we also need to increase, on one hand, the involvement of fishermen. Because consumers are willing to pay more for a quality product. And so it is important to increase the awareness of this, and so it is important to, uh, to to spread, for example, the results of this uh, study, also social economic study, to increase the awareness of um, consumers and fishers. <laughs> Thank you. I recall you all that we are going live on streaming, and unfortunately, in ten minutes, uh, this um, um, the streaming will um, end. Uh, so we have to continue. So I'd like to ask um, 
Um, and uh, the other two guests, um, Dr. Mirto and Professor Kara, to um, to say their um, impression um, short, um, briefly, because we will have also the conclusions and we must uh, see the um, videos of the students. I'd like to ask another uh, question. What we which actions are necessary for farming uh, enterprises in order to strengthen the production in um, the view of environmental sustainability? The easiest uh, thing to do is um, to certify farming companies is um, certification. Um, so it's important to increase the productions by uh, taking into account quality and environmental um, sustainability topics. As Andrea was uh, mentioning, uh, the Sicilian fish, but um, also Croatian fish, for example, has um, um, better qualities than other, than other countries because it was made with artisanal uh, processes rather than industrial processes, but it is also a benefit um, due to the quality of the environment. So I believe that our peculiarity must be organized and preserved. I mean, the fact that we have areas which are good for the farming of quality fish if we organize them well, and, and this can um, is a function that the management authority can have. So if we make a zoning of the areas um, used for aquaculture, we perform two interventions. On one hand, we try to find those areas which um, uh, can uh, better ensure uh, the quality but also those areas where it is easier for this uh, farming to be sustainable, and so areas um, which are appropriate to reduce environmental effects. But at the same time, we preserve them because we, um, we um, eliminate uh, the um, threats uh, coming from other species, for example, that can affect uh, the quality. So I believe this is uh, something very important. But uh, the increase in uh, production in, in terms of sustainability and quality is um, an action which must um, be done together with um, uh, the uh, universities, the research centers, uh, the enterprises. Uh, so we must uh, find uh, um, technological systems uh, um, which are more modern and efficient uh, which uh, can um, reduce the environmental effects of uh, farming. So if we do this um, with um, a, a long-term journey, a systemic system, and if this is done by all actors involved, if everyone gives his own contribution, this can add something to the labels um, because uh, we said that the consumer always uh, wonder um, where the where the fish is um, uh, caught. For example, in uh, the label, we can certify the intrinsic qualities of the product. We can say where it has been farmed. But if we add to that label a peculiarity, that is, this fish has been farmed in a sustainable way, so a sustainable fish, then we add quality. This quality ensures uh, the consumers, uh, uh, reassures the consumer that the consumer is um, using uh, sustainable products um, and we give an added value. Uh, we uh, give, we um, do a kind of upgrade to the farming product and we make something good for everyone, for consumers, producers and the environment. Thank you.
you so much. Last but not least, we have Giuseppina Carra. I've already introduced her before. I would like to ask some questions to her, some final questions of this roundtable. The well-being and the satisfaction of uh, the consumer on the one hand, together with the need for quality and food safety. Uh, one of the major agonisms, uh, you are one of the major ag economists that we have, so can these things stimulate the competitiveness of a productive system on a regional scale or a multi-regional scale? Before one thing, we are in streaming, so here we talked about pathologies, diseases, we made so many researches and so many activities aimed at preserving healthy and food safety. But we have to say one thing clearly, the Mediterranean Sea must be safeguarded from a productive point of view, but fish is good for health. So in those cases of uh, anisakis, etc., we saw 57 in nine years, 57 cases. So there are no so many in Italy. We're talking about zero point uh, something. So fish is good for health. Let's say it clearly. We have to incentivize young and uh, and old people to eat fish because it's good for our health. Thank you, Mr. Tumbiolo. I will be brief, but let me first of all thank the organizers for the organizers for the invitation and to participate in this roundtable. And I would also like to outline the interest of the uh, speeches that we had today from our researchers, but also from the companies and enterprises. And this is useful for me to say that in our region we have excellent enterprises in the fishery sector and in the aquaculture sector. But at the same time, it is uh, very important to connect these enterprises with the, the uh, market and the consumers. Very often these uh, a uh, weak link uh, is uh, big, but instead this is a big opportunity for being competitive on the global market. So this is uh, the first challenge that we have. And in my opinion, but all not only in my opinion, according to economic studies, that go towards this direction. This is the first challenge, this connection, this intelligence of market. Now we're talking about that, and this means knowledge, capacity of the market and the preferences of consumers. And the other challenge is the production for our market. It is important to acknowledge our, to our fishing products the attributes the awarding attributes. We talked about the issue, uh, I don't know, the organolactic issues, healthy, quality, etc. But these awarding attributes must be acknowledged. We should give to the enterprises the instruments in order to, to distinguish themselves. This is one of the most important thing, uh, rules for the competitiveness, apart from the price, that's the differentiation of the product. So these are three rules, traceability, labeling, and that means, you know, and certification. So these are the three key points through which uh, we have to, uh, the, the companies have to uh, equip themselves and the uh, researchers need to work in order to compete on the global level. We know the amount of fish imported and our product must be acknowledged in our market, first of all. So we have this need for developing this market intelligence involving the activities of distribution that could be more efficient 
and also the transformation, the processing. And this is also an issue supporting the need mentioned by Mr. Patti and Mr. Mito as well. So sustainability, uh, this goes towards this direction. And what Mrs. Villanueva said, well, and other people as well, these are fundamental things that are elaborated. So these knowledges are instruments as well, and new instruments, because this is not just uh, a simple issue. It's a new technological issue, being able to use the new intelligence in terms of uh, IT system on these things, this is very important and it is, this is also inclusive because uh, it's easy to communicate with everybody, not only with the consumer but also the entire supply chain. And in this uh, regard, I would like to finish. I've just handed the, delivered the project given by the European Commission implemented with the group of cognitive sciences of the CNR. We worked as University of Catania on the social economical part and the contents of the creation of uh, uh, an information system at the European level on the trade denominations and every information going together with that and from a scientific point of view as well. So this uh, IT system has all has been introduced and presented at the CIFL program in Brussels on the 23rd and the 24th of April. I thought that it was also there was also the processing group of so <coughs> producers and uh, experts of processing and this uh, is a very important thing where together with the elements of mandatory elements of knowledge, uh, according to the law, Article 35 of the European Rule of 2013, 1379, there are also information um, that are uh, not mandatory. So this is an important part of it. We are under a demo phase a pilot project but this is interesting and the uh, European Commission is interested in developing it because it included every country every one of the 28 European countries and we managed it by a transnational point of view but every voluntary element is important where the companies are the real protagonists so we're not just talking about politics but also the capacity from uh, from the, to the, the, the first steps, and I would like to thank you all. Well, I continue to give you the microphone because I would like to please uh, the architect Tornabene and then general director Mr. Ferrara. I would like to ask them to say something to bring here their contribution. I would like to remind to myself, and I tell that to you, we are planning, because we touch so many interesting issues, but the focus on the presentation of the results of the project on the blue economy will be made, I think, in the end of November, where two very interesting news will be created. The creation of uh, two new startups. One is on the creation of uh, a group of young people managing the Tito Sano. So the fruit of this experimentation, which is very interesting, that lasted for so many years, is the use of uh, substances coming from uh, uh, the crustaceans. And the other one is an association of enterprises in the sector of processing aimed at 
an experiment named anchovies in barrique achuge in barrique and this is a news it's not just communication and has already shown this wasn't a uh, bad invention the idea of the blue economy when i went when i presented these documents to the architect Nabene. He looked at me as if I was an alien because I said, what's this uh, blue economy? And then I discovered that he's uh, crazier than me because he bet so much on this uh, thing. And so now we are proud to say that this starts from Sicily. And as the major economists confirmed, this is uh, uh, is um, being implemented all over Europe. We want to implement this program and we have the, the duty to let everybody know, to let the planet know, and we do it every year with an important manif event in Sicily and we are doing it in Expo, you know, that you talked about these exercises of blue economy. These are important exercises. These are economic activities creating economy. And yesterday, John, John Kerry, who was here, said these things. And President Obama as well. So the blue economy is destined to produce richness. Well, do not forget that the blue economy was invented by those uh, misters uh, from uh, the Department of uh, the Fishery in the Mediterranean area. They believed in it so much, uh, so nobody has to forget that they are the ones who invented this philosophy, this important model for the planet. Thank you so much. I would like to give leave the conclusions to the architect Tornabel. So briefly, um, everything was said. I'm very glad uh, for what Mr. Tumbiolo said on craziness because I still remember when he presented the uh, pact of the districts, but maybe he forgets when we introduced the plan referring to the l uh, lines of intervention 511203 that for the first time in the Sicily region, there was um, a plan so that the enterprises could activate the research, the training, and the communication. So for uh, they told me that I was crazy because the calls for a proposal were too complex, too complicated. But now we're talking about FEP. And in the past, we talked about FEOGA and then FEP. There's this interconnection, this communication with uh, the various funds that are fundamental in order to obtain and to reinforce everything concerning our districts in Sicily. <coughs> Mr. Ferrara, thank you, Mr. F Tumbiolo. Very punctual in, not only in the organization of everything, but also in giving the floor in the right moment. I will be very short uh, as usual. Well, I do not see so many uh, crazy people here. There's the capacity of believing in something that goes uh, beyond science. And we talked about very interesting and scientific issues. We would like to thank you all for your presence and for your contribution. First of all, at the personal level, because listening to what you've said is something that is uh, create some uh, richness for us. And you also uh, gave, uh, help us uh, 
before at the beginning of Expo. And during these six months, we worked a lot in a very intense way. We had many workshops and meetings on very interesting issues concerning our uh, land. And then there's the issue of uh, sea and fishery. And while I was coming here this morning, I thought about the uh, region show here in Palazzo Italia where there's Europe without Italy. And the question is, what would the world be without Italy? And I would say, what would the Mediterranean be without Sicily? This is what I would say. And what Sicily would be without the sea, without the richness given by the sea. And the opportunity of uh, growing and finding the correct way to have contributions for a development that could be more scientific aimed at improving our life <laughs> conditions. Thank you all. Good. Now we would finish with the, uh, these videos and then Mrs. Stasi said that these uh, uh, videos, we will see the, watch these videos later on as well. So this is how young people uh, saw the blue economy. This is their point of view.
coordinated this work. The head of the institution, Professor Lisma, the Professor Scontrino. The students were presented, introduced yesterday by the assessor, and she was very happy and honored, as far as she said. And yesterday, we understand that, and this was shown by this video that focused on the value of these initiatives. Is there another video? I think, well, maybe we will watch that later. This is the video that won the uh, competition. Thank you all. Have a nice day.